At this point, we assume that you've created your Blackboard Collaborate Alter Room. Uh, you've set up your options the way that you want them to be. And now we're going to enter the room for the first time, see what that looks like. And we're going to go over the interface options within the room. So here are at our main course. We go over to Blackboard Collaborate Ultra that we previously, previously set up. Here's our unlocked course room. Previously, we looked at options, etc. And now we're going to enter the room for the first time. Uh, keep in mind that you can send a uh, participant the ability to join uh, with a guest link, or you can invite people in for anonymous dial-in. We're just going to go ahead and enter the room for the first time. So what we see as we enter the room is a welcome screen, uh, and uh, we are now in unfamiliar territory. We'll go over all the elements in a minute. I do want to point out that it's possible to lose track of where you are, how many tabs you have going, and you may uh, accidentally re-enter a room or try to re-enter a room uh, a second time. If you try to re-enter a room that you're already in, you're going to get this message that you've already joined the session uh, and it suggests that you look to see if you joined in another uh, window, uh, etc. So, uh, that's a bad sign. You're going to have to go back and uh, fix the problem. All right, so this is what the room looks like. Let's take a look at the room interface to see what it is we're looking at. The room interface has two main areas. This large area is what we'll call the participants area. It takes up most of the screen. And then at the bottom, we have something called the interaction bar. Uh, and there are also icons at the top left and bottom right. The top left is the session menu and the bottom right is the uh, collaborate panel. First of all, let's look at the interaction bar and the buttons that are there. As you will see, we have the options to check on my status and settings, share or not share audio, share or not share video, and the ability to raise your hand. If you have changed these session settings when you set up your session, for example, to not permit participant users to share audio or to share video, then these icons would not appear. They, they would simply see the status and settings button and the raise hand button. Looking at the status and settings button, you'll find that you have several interesting choices uh, and bits of information here. One piece of information is, how is the user's experience? You can see here, my experience is excellent, and it tells me that I'm operating at 48 kilobytes per second, and that's very good. Also, I can indicate that I am away from the session. There's nobody to see that right now, but I can be away. Other users right now would see a little yellow clock next to my icon, uh, indicating that I'm away but planning to come back. When I click on this, then of course that icon goes away and I return. You can also have people click on a feedback icon that would cause reaction to appear for everybody else in the session uh, and so they can judge how things are going. I might ask, uh, are you, uh, how do you feel about the session so far? And you might find respondents are clicking happy. That would be a good thing, for example. So that's an interesting and easy way to get immediate feedback from students. Obviously, you can also ask the equivalent of yes, no questions. They can click agree uh, or disagree. So this is something that you can use to interact with your students during the session. Share audio, of course, controls whether or not the microphones are live for the conversations. Uh, it toggles between share audio and mute uh, audio. Uh, and likewise, it works the same way for share video and mute video. On the share audio, you can see that the microphone fills up as I talk into my uh, mic in the room uh, to indicate that indeed I have good loud audio going off. I'm gonna leave the icon on, but turn off my mic. So since I've turned off my mic, you can't actually hear it anymore from that source, but now you can see it's not bouncing up and down anymore. If that happens with one of our students, we're going to go in and ask them to check to see what's going on to fix the problem. For example, we would want to ask uh, the users to check to see whether their headset or microphone was plugged in, 
Uh, does their mic have a mute switch of some kind on the head sweat or headset or the mic? That's what I click to stop the uh, sound coming over to the room. Uh, is the computer's audio muted or turned down very low? That's a different setting. And in a little bit, we'll see how users can check the audio and video settings in the Collaborate panel to make sure that Collaborate is configured to recognize their audio. If there's an echo of some kind, it might result because there are two or more students that are in close proximity to one another in the same physical room, and so the user's voice may be coming in or out through two microphones or speakers. Moving on to the share video op option, let's look at that. As you can see, if you click on the share video icon, you first get a video pre preview, so you can see what you're gonna look like before the session begins. I didn't actually plan on recording myself, but it's necessary, I guess, for this particular session. So I'm going to, when I'm ready, share the video. And it's going to pop up uh, for me in the bottom left. And users would see me full screen at this point in time. Various users may have audio and video turned on at the same time. Collaborate is set up to display the video image of the current active speaker. And it's worth noting there's usually a short delay as the system moves back and forth uh, between speakers. I'm gonna go ahead and take my, my video off of here. Raising the hand helps uh, your students to raise a virtual hand in the classroom uh, while they're participating. And then there is uh, an icon on your side that lets you see how many people have questions. If a student is in, you can lower their hand. Uh, I'm gonna pause here and bring a student in. Let's see how it looks when uh, a student enters. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is to bring in a student that I sent a link to. So now we see that our student, a little blurry, Sam Adams is joining that Sam Adams has joined. And so we do see now what it looks like when we have our first student in the room. Uh, Sammy raises his hand and we can see on the icon uh, or his area that he has raised his hand. Uh, we're gonna call on him and maybe lower his hand and he can respond in whatever way seems appropriate. And now we see that another student has joined in. He looks familiar to us, but indeed we can see it's a different student. This is test student. So now we have two students in the course, uh, Sam Adams and test student. And so now we have participants within the, uh, the class. As we noted earlier, we can make use of the status and settings button to do a quick poll. So um, can everybody in the class hear me? If you can, please uh, click on my status and settings and indicate uh, agree for yes and disagree for no. So the question is, uh, you can hear me okay. And so we see that both Sam Adams indicates that uh, he can hear us okay and that test student hears that we can hear us okay. And then presently the vote uh, goes away. So that represents the basic elements of a Collaborate Room. Uh, in the next video, we'll take a look at the session menu, and we'll take a look at the open collaborate panel details.